Did you guys know that your computer actually has a built-in secret performance score that takes into account things like your memory performance, your disk performance, graphics performance, it puts it all into one number, and then you can look at that and determine how good your computer is. Those of you who are a little bit more familiar with computers may know what I'm talking about. It's called the Windows Experience Index, and actually it was introduced in Windows Vista and was readily visible in Vista and Windows 7. If you were to go to the system properties, it would be right there, and it would tell you this Windows Experience Index and it'd give you a score. But starting with Windows 8 and Windows 10, it's no longer in the system properties, but they kept the scoring system System in the background it's still there you just don't get it readily available in that system properties so first let's talk about what the score kind of calculates and then we can go through exactly how you can look up the score for your computer basically the piece of software that does the calculation of the score is called the Windows system assessment tool or SAT or WinSAT and it's pretty much a benchmark tool so you've seen benchmarks maybe like 3d mark PC mark which just create a score based on how well it performs certain tests. It's basically the same exact thing as that. Windows built one into their own computer instead. And the final resulting number is the Windows Experience Index. And there's actually five different subscores that go into this score. So those are scores for the processor, the memory, 2D graphics, 3D graphics, and disk performance, including SSD versus HDD, it can distinguish those. And one important thing to note is it's not just an average of these scores. Somehow it's weighted and it kind of takes all these into account. But interestingly with this tool, unlike a lot of other benchmarks, is there's actually a score range. So a lot of benchmarks software, you probably know, they just kind of have a score that as computers get better, the scores go up maximum. But with Windows, depending on your version of Windows, it actually has a score range with a different maximum. So for example, with Windows Vista, the maximum score range was from 1.0, if your computer was just garbage, up to 5.9 maximum. Then in Windows 7, it went up to 7.9 as the maximum. And with Windows 8 and Windows 10, it goes from 1 to 9.9. .9. So that's one disadvantage, and it's kind of dumb with the score, is if your computer already has a 9.9, .9, then you upgrade, it's still gonna be 9.9. .9. It's not really that useful in comparing computers that are already really high end it's only maybe comparable to computers that are lower end at this point. Because if you think about it, when Windows 10 came out in 2015, the maximum was 9.9 .9 then. And I mean, five years later, it's still 9.9. .9, and obviously processing power has greatly increased in that time. So I don't really know if it's that useful. It's more of just an interesting thing, but it does have some uses. For example, software developers can use the score to potentially determine whether or not a person's computer is powerful enough to run software. They could give them a warning that, hey, your computer might not be powerful enough or each subscore might not be powerful enough. Or another possibility is if you are looking to upgrade your computer and you're not sure which part to upgrade first, which is bottlenecking, then you could look at the experience score and see which subscore has the lowest thing. Like maybe if your disk score is really low, you'd be like, oh, well, I need to get an SSD. Or if the 3D graphics, you could say, oh, well, my graphics card needs to be upgraded, that sort of thing. So if you're curious about what your score actually is, if you're in Windows Vista and Windows 7, this is really easy. You just go into the system properties and it'll show it right there. But if you're on Windows 8 or Windows 10, you do have to run a command with the command prompt and PowerShell to see it. So it's a little bit more involved, but it is possible. It's still built into Windows, so you can look it up by going to the command prompt and then typing in the command WinSAT formal. So that stands for Windows System Assessment Tool and formal. And then it'll run the tests and your computer probably will slow down and lag a bit while this is running. It's literally running a benchmark, just like other benchmarking tools. It'll probably max out the CPU while it's trying to determine its maximum performance and all that. Then once the test is completed, you actually have to go into PowerShell to see the actual results. Now there's other ways to do it, like it does create a XML file in the Windows folder, but we're not gonna worry about that. The easiest way is to go into PowerShell, which you're gonna search for in the start menu, and then type in this command, and then that'll show you the results. So you can just copy it, I'll put it in the description, or just read it off the screen. So with my scores, for example, you can see here, they're actually pretty good, even though my computer is several years old. Although when I did buy it around 2015, 2016, it was very high end at the time, so it still even holds up, but that also kind of goes back to my point of, well, if it was super high end 9.9 .9 rating in 2015, it's still gonna be in 2020, even though it's not really a high end computer anymore. But you can see 
that the CPU score is 9.4, the D3D score, that's Direct 3D, that's uh, graphics performance at 9.9. So I did upgrade my graphics card since then, so that's probably why it's 9.9. And the disk score is 9.25, I have SSDs in there. And then graphics score, I'm not sure how that's different from direct 3D score, but whatever, and that's 9.7. Memory score, 9.4. And then you can see win SPR level, I do believe that is the overall accumulative score and it's 9.25. So overall 9.25 out of 9.9, .9, I'm not gonna call that too bad of a result considering my computer's several years old, but you can do it on your computer and see whether you got a higher result, lower result. But like I said, probably the most common use case for the average person is just gonna see where am I bottlenecking, which of my components is getting the lowest score, is it by far the lowest score, and then you can consider maybe upgrading just that component. So you could look at that if your computer's running slow and you want it to run a little bit faster, but remember if your computer was fast at one time and now it's just starting to run slow over time, that could be just because you accumulate crap and it's lots of startup programs taking up resources. I did actually make another video I'd recommend definitely talking about ways to speed up Windows to kind of relieve a lot of that accumulated junk. So I'll put that link right there if you want to check that out. So anyway, this is a pretty short video. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.